So I've put off doing this video for a long time, um, which is the real truth about Cherry Audio. And I've wanted to do something like this. I don't have a script, so I'm just going to wing it here. And I wanted to talk about specifically um, why I love Cherry Audio. Um, that's the premise here that we're, we're sticking with. So a um, uh, few years back, um, 2018, 2019, I forget when it was now, um, I saw a video that was Dan Goldstein in Nevada and Las Vegas talking about Cherry Audio and specifically Voltage Modular. So there was going to be a big sale on Voltage Modular and it was going to be like a Black Friday deal and you could get Nucleus for $9. Nucleus is the most basic Voltage Modular um, um, bundle and it comes with just enough stuff to really get you started. Oscillators, filter, um, some basic effects, um, that's what was included in that. So now you can get that for free, but it was $9 back then. And so I'm, I knew what Eurorack was. I saw some friends of mine that had Eurorack stuff um, played with the um, wind controller. Um, so it, it, you know, for the $9, it sounded like a cool thing because I really like plugins. I do most of my things on an iPad and on a laptop. So I was interested in and to see what it was. So I got Voltage Modular and in about 48 hours, I started spending a bunch of money because um, it was really like the perfect thing suited for what I do with, with breath control. And the reason that I say that is just the, the, the flexibility and the MIDI control routing. It, it's, it, these instruments, they weren't specifically designed for breath control, but, but they might as well have been. They were that good. And I'll explain that. I have DCO 106 up. I'm going to um, show the MIDI control panel. Hopefully it's showing up here. Well, I'm doing the window capture, so it should be fine. So right now I just have breath mapped to the filter frequency. It's not scaled. And one nice thing with the MIDI control, um, you know, it has MIDI Learn. All of these instruments now have the option to do MIDI control at the global level, um, which is how it started, or you can do it at the patch level. Not very many plugins allow you to do this. Um, I know on iOS, um, there's an app called Mood that has patch level control mapping. Um, and there's some others, but by and large, most synthesizer plugins, when you do MIDI Learn, it's at the global level for everything. And, and that sort of works with breath control because most people are going to map breath to the filter frequency, and then um, that'll work from one patch to another. But one thing that I like to do is sometimes I'll, match, I'll map breath to the frequency, and sometimes I'll also send it to the resonance and you can get a very different quality of sound that way. So for example, so like this patch, I haven't scaled the MIDI yet. Um, I just remapped it because I had it set up before. So we get the... A lot of delay on here. I'm gonna turn the delay off for a minute. Now there's not much of a dead zone on this instrument. Some instruments have kind of a dead zone. And then what I do with the filter. And then what I do is I'll start it at maybe 10%, not starting it at 0%. So when you hit breath, the filter never fully closes. And then another thing is a lot of times opening the filter all the way is too much. So, and, and I have a certain amount of resonance on the patch now, you know, manually set, so it's at a fixed level. But, um, 
depending on what you're doing with the resonance, you might not want to open the filter all the way with breath. So like on like this, so so i'm only opening the filter to about 65 percent um if i wasn't using as much resonance you might want to open it more but i've found that when you open it like a lot it the, it's counterproductive at some point. I mean, really, once you get much beyond 50 or 60 percent, when you have the resonance cranked pretty hard, it, there's not an advantage. So let me dial this back. Now you're sending zero from one zero to 127. So ultimately, um, the way you scale the breath. It, it, it influences the way you get the instrument response. And I haven't touched the curve yet. That's another nice feature of these Cherry Audio instruments. You have the curve. So, um, so sometimes you might want a little slower curve. Now I'm going to mess with the resonance. I need to move the plug in a little bit. Okay, so where's the resonance? So, so the way the Cherry Audio synth works, you can really mess around with and fine tune and um, really get the, the nuance to the sound with breath control more than you can with really a lot of synthesizer plugins. And, and again, so this is the, the real truth about Cherry Audio is they just work so good with breath control. Um, I just find myself using them all the time. Are they the only instruments I use? No, because of course I like different sounds and I like different instruments and I'll mess around with, with, with you know, a little of everything, but you know, when I want something that's a real um, nuanced, programmable lead sound, I tend to go to the Cherry Audio ones, at least on desktop, because I know that I can do all the scaling and routing. Another fun thing you can do, so right now I have the resonance going low to high, but what if you invert it? You start with it high and then you can go low. Uh, maybe you wouldn't necessarily do that, but um you know, that's really effective. I've also seen patches where maybe you do that kind of a thing with the frequency. So the filter, the filter goes, let's see.
double tonguing thing I was doing. That reminds me of another reason I like the Cherry Audio. They're super fast. They have very, very low latency um, on the attack, and that's a big thing with breath control. Um, somebody talked about how with synthesizer sounds that really it's the very attack of the sound that contains most of the information that help you identify kind of what it is or what it sounds like or whatever. And I agree with that a lot. And that's one thing that um, with plugins, if there's a certain amount of latency in that plugin, what's going to end up happening is you, you can never get like a super immediate attack or do something like, okay, let me switch this back the way I hit it before. And I had this about 60 something. there's some instruments where you really can't get that kind of machine gun attack thing happening it's almost like like a guitar player um, scrubbing the strings a little bit and, and that's one of the things I used to do when I would start playing with plugins like if I get a new free plugin or whatever and downloaded it one of the first things I would do is I would start doing like these little double tonguing exercise to see okay how fast does it respond and yeah the cherry audio ones are, are pretty much lightning fast compared to a lot of them like like the old synth one was really fast it had a really fast attack and I was using that a lot before I got into all the um, cherry audio ones because because initially it was just voltage modular and then they came out with the DC 0106 and then another one that I use all the time, and I have to go in and fix my settings in these, is, it's going to go away for a second. I'm going to have to switch the window. Quadra. 